What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Haps audiobook. Today we are going to be reading through the actual titular story of this book called Haps. This is actually my least favourite of the three, but it's still a pretty okay story. So, I mean, I haven't actually, like, read it properly yet. I've only read the leaks, of course. So, I don't really know if uh, if that just changes everything uh, by just reading the leak. Like, I don't know if I'm going to read this and I'm going to love it uh, after reading it. But, you know, we'll see. Let, let's, let's just get straight into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, yeah. So, let's get straight into it. Aiden flung open the door in front of him and stomped out into the chaos that was the main concourse through the Freddy Fazbear's mega pizzaplex. The door hit the wall with a bang loud enough to get the attention of a group of giggling girls passing by the exit area of the laser tag arena. Laser tag arena? Sorry, I'm, I'm going to be pointing out a few things while reading, but yeah. Aiden recognised the girls immediately. They were seniors at his school. The door rebounded and hit Aiden from behind. The girls laughed at him. One of the girls, a cute redhead Nora, raised her brows and pointed when she saw Aiden's swollen left eye. Nice Shana, Aiden. She put emphasis on the second syllable in his name and changed the E to an O, pronouncing his name Aidon. <laughs> Instead of the way it was supposed to be pronounced, with a more with more inflection on the A and an E sound instead of an O in the second syllable. This mangling of Aiden's name was pretty universal at his school. It had started when Aiden, new to the school, had a wild idea and tried out for a talent competition. Unnaturally tall and skinny for his 15 years, Aiden was burdened with wild bushy hair, a beaky nose, no chin, and lopsided eyes. He knew he was nothing to look at, so he tried to make up for it with unusual abilities and knowledge. Aiden was an accomplished juggler. He had mad skills with a hula hoop and a jump rope, and could do things with a yo-yo that no one else had thought of. He'd convinced himself it would be a good way to meet people and fit in if he put together a routine, showcasing these gifts and presented them in his new school's talent show. His plan, unfortunately, had backfired. In front of the dozens of kids hanging out to watch the auditions, Aiden was called onto the stage by clueless Mrs. Marchant, the head of the theatre department. Aidon, she had warbled when he'd come on stage with his uh, jump rope, hula hoop, juggling pins and yo-yo. Everyone probably would have forgotten the incident if he hadn't completely bungled his routine. Aiden had an arsenal of tricks, but they all failed him that day. Self-conscious, he had ended up getting so entangled with his rope and his yo-yo that he'd fallen down and then managed to trip off the stage. Story of his life. Ignore them, Aiden's one and only friend Jace said now. The black eye makes you look tough. Aiden snorted. He kicked at one of the neon squares on the floor of the walkway through the pizzaplex. Yeah, right. Wait till Landon tells everyone how I got it, jackass. Laser tag is supposed to be about shooting the laser guns, not hand-to-hand -hand combat. He threw that elbow on purpose. Jace sighed and pulled Aiden, oblivious of his surroundings, out of the path of a group of kids chasing one another through the pizzaplex. Yeah, he probably did. Newsflash, he's a jerk. Aiden steaming, stalked away from the laser tag arena. Bumping into people left and right, he barely heard or saw anything around him. He was vaguely aware that Jace was trotting after him, but the bright lights and cheerful sounds of the pizzaplex were being muted by the buzz of Aiden's rage. He was so tired of being treated like crap, like he was a bull trapped inside a pinball machine being slapped this way and that way by his classmates and his parents. He was tired of being a pawn. He wanted some control. Aiden. Jace tugged at Aiden's shirt sleeve. When Aiden ignored him, he tugged harder. Aiden! Aiden stopped and whirled on his friend. What? Jace's face tightened, and he hunched his shoulders. Already small for a ninth grader, Jace could practically curl into a ball when he felt rejected or criticised. Unlike Aiden, Jace wasn't bad looking. He had a normal face and perfectly normal black hair, but he was too cute, as in little kid cute. He was too small and too fragile, and he had an unfortunate little boy voice to go with his looks. This shoved him out into the same no man's land of unpopularity that Aiden had lived in ever since he was five years old. The day before his first day in kindergarten, Aiden had overheard his mum telling a friend 
that she wished his sweet personality would overcome his unfortunate homeliness. Her hopes had been, well, hopeless. Aidan immediately felt bad when he looked at Jace's crushed expression. Jace was the only person who treated Aidan like he mattered. Sorry, Jace. I'm just pissed as all. Jace nodded. I get it. I'm sorry Landon elbowed you. I should have found a way to have your back, but he kind of outweighs me. Plus, besides the laser gun, all I have is this. Jace pulled out the Swiss army knife his mum had given him for his birthday. He was ridiculously happy with the gift, as if the tiny knife and its itsy bitsy scissors and corkscrew and file and screwdriver could transform little Jace into an invincible warrior. Aiden punched Jace's shoulder lightly. Well, next time, pull that thing out and run him through. Jace laughed. He pretended to wield the knife like a sword. A little girl in braided pigtails bounced off Aiden's legs, and he felt something wet and sticky on his skin. He looked down just in time to see the little girl's huge smiley face sucker finish swiping his forearm. Ew! Aiden yanked his arm back and glared at the little girl. She didn't even notice him. Uh, Jace plucked at Aiden's sleeve again. This time, Aiden didn't snap. He let Jace pull him out of the flow of the crowd, back against the bright striped wall next to the, Leon, the, eh, the neon lit entrance to the bumper car arena. Aiden glowered at Freddy's themed cars. Normally, he liked bumper cars. They were a great way to let off steam. Today, though, somehow, the shiny little shoe-shaped pods painted to look like Freddy's animatronic characters were just too perky. What do you want to do now? Jace asked. Aiden pulled his gaze from the chaos of the zigzagging, careening bumper cars. Listening to the cars buzzing and the kids whooping, he shrugged. So far today, he and Jace had played their favourite arcade games, spent some time in the VR booths, ridden the roller coaster, and stuffed themselves with pizza. None of that had done it for Aiden. He just wasn't in the mood to have fun today. He'd been ready to give up and go home and watch TV when Jace had suggested laser tag. Aiden had agreed when he'd seen Landon and his friends go into the arena. Aiden hated Landon, and the idea of shooting the smug jerk with a laser gun had sounded like a good idea. Aiden gingerly touched his uh, still swelling eye. He grimaced. So much for that good idea. Why don't we go tubing? Jace asked. Remember how much fun it was last time when we were scared? Well, sorry, when we scared those little kids? Despite his mood, Aiden smiled. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Tubing was Jason Aiden's word for clambering through Freddy's fortress, a massive maze of climbing and sliding plastic pipes that entwined with Fast Freddy, the Pizza Plex's super fast roller coaster, embraced the entire circumference of the center. They'd only recently checked out the maze because it was advertised more toward the younger kids than toward teens. They'd originally gone poking around the maze because they'd been avoiding some bullies who had been hassling them in the arcade. At least you shouldn't get hurt in the tubes, Jace said, panting. Haps won't let that happen. He laughed his patented girlish twitter. Aiden grinned. Good old Haps. Haps, Aiden and Jace had discovered... Uh, uh, sorry, I read that completely wrong. Haps, Aiden and Jace had discovered when they first explored the maze, was a maintenance and safety bot designed to prevent injuries in the maze. Haps stood for Helpful Automated Pipe Protection Server. It was a robot that roamed the tubes or pipes, checking to be sure everything was in good order and helping out kids who had fallen or were lost. Aiden and Jace got a big kick out of Haps. They thought their robot's huge lit up smile and large foam hands were hilarious. When, they'd when they first encountered him, they'd wanted to adopt him, which is weird. Wouldn't it be great if we had a Haps to clear the way for us at school? Jace had asked as, had theirs, as they left the maze after the first time they'd explored it. Aiden had warmed to the idea. Yeah, Haps could just toss aside all the jerks. Jace laughed. And do our homework for us. And clean our rooms. He could do all our chores. Aiden chuckled. That would be cool. And lock my dad out of the house when he gets in his bad moods, Jace said. This last thought had sobered them. Aiden's parents didn't approve of him. They tended to ignore him. But Jace's dad was mean. There was nothing funny about that. Now Aiden slung a, an arm around his friend's shoulders. Yeah, let's go tubing. Jace grinned, 
and the two boys stepped into the flow of the crowd rushing from one part of the pizzaplex to the other. As soon as they did, Aiden felt the pulsing heat in his temples begin to abate. He mentally shook off the image of Landon's perpetual I'm better than you smirk. The entrance to Freddy's fortress was on the opposite side of the pizzaplex from the bumper cars. It would take several minutes to get there at Jace's pace. His small legs couldn't stride as fast as Aiden's could. When Aiden and Jace had come to the pizzaplex the first time, the place had been overwhelming. It was huge. Fortunately though, its layout was pretty simple. The pizzaplex was shaped like a pizza under a massive neon lit dome topped by a black by a back lit pizza themed stained glass cupola. God, that was so hard to say. Because of this round configuration, Jace had told Aiden he thought the pizzaplex was sort of a giant clock of fun. Because Freddy's Pizzeria was the inspiration for everything in the pizzaplex, Jace suggested that the big dining area where the pizza was served was noon on the clock. Every other main part of the pizzaplex was another hour on the clock face. Laser tag was at 4 o'clock, the entrance to Freddy's Fortress was between the Carnival Games area in the 2 o'clock position, and the arcade was in the 3 o'clock position. Unfortunately, when Aiden had charged out to the laser tag arena, he'd headed left instead of right. So, they'd ended up in front of the bumper cars, which was at 7 o'clock on Jace's imaginary pizzaplex clock face. It didn't take long to hurry past the roleplay area, something Aiden and Jace hadn't tried yet, and the employees only section of the pizzaplex, the behind the scenes janitorial storage maintenance kitchen and security areas. After that, they strode past the shopping area and then on the packed dining area and its enticing aroma of pepperoni and onions. Even though Aiden and Jace had filled up on pizza already, the food still smelled good. As they moved through the crowd, go-karts shot past on the track that ran parallel to the walkways and sometimes dipped under pedestrian bridges. The Doppler hum of the cart's electric motors was like a bass line to the crowd noise. Just beyond the dining room, the carousel spun in kaleidoscopic colour and tinkling music sound as they passed it. And just after that, the carnival games area bulged in chaotic crowds of laughing people shouting encouragement as they tried to win Plush Freddy's character prizes. Finally, Aiden and Jace made it to the entrance to Freddy's Fortress. They got in the line behind two dark-haired girls uh, who were dancing happily to the music blasting through the Pizzaplex's sound system. With a neon arch, like all the other Pizzaplex venue openings, the entrance to Freddy's Fortress was long, narrow and disorienting. Painted in a black and white pinwheel illusion pattern, the entrance made you feel like you were stepping into infinity. You felt like you were leaving the real world behind being lured into a topsy-turvy realm that would trap you forever. Aiden and Jace thought it was super cool. Maybe we should paint the inside of our fort like this when we build it in the summer, Jay said now. Aiden thought about it. Think we could pull it off? I don't know how to paint illusions. I don't either, Jay said. But we could figure it out, right? We're our own universe, aren't we? We can make whatever we want. Aiden grinned at his friend. He gave Jace a high five. Jace returned it. Jace and Aiden had been friends for only a few months, since Aiden's dad had been transferred to the town and Aiden had started at the new school in the middle of the term. Aiden hated starting schools in mid-term. Why couldn't his dad stick with one job in one town? Even though Aiden hadn't known Jace long, he was closer to Jace than he'd ever gotten to his friends in previous towns. Aiden was a one friend at a time guy. Not by choice, it just seemed to work out that way. I know people online have been, uh, have been uh, shipping these guys. As like gay icons, which is pretty cool. I I can see it. I see it. Uh, it, it nev the story never calls out like they were gay, <laughs> but uh, you can definitely see it. Let me just have a drink so, quick. Okay, Jace had been the only kid who hadn't decided that Aiden's jump roping, hula hooping, juggling, yo yoing fiasco left him unqualified for friendship. Jace had come to sit with Aiden at lunch the day Aiden had so spectacularly made a fool of himself. Come to laugh at the new class clown? Aiden had asked Jace when he'd sat down and opened his brown bag. Nope, came to meet the bravest guy in the school, Jace said, pulling out an array of plastic containers that Aiden would later find out contained a sun-dried tomato and crab salad sandwich on sourdough bread, wild greens and raspberry vinaigrette and a kiwi fruit tart. That sounds so amazing. Uh, Jace had sophisticated food tastes. 
The only food he and Aiden agreed on was pizza, and Jace always wanted his with weird toppings like artichoke hearts and goat cheese and caramelised onions. They always got a half and half pizza. Aiden was a plain pepperoni guy. After Jace had pulled out his fancy lunch, he'd grinned and offered a hand. It took guts to do what you did. Aiden had stared at Jace's elfish face. You're not messing with me, are you? Jace shook his head. I don't know how to mess with people, I'm just... Well, me, I guess. Not that too many people appreciate that, but it is what it is. I'm my own universe. Aiden laughed. He liked that. Well, do you have room in that universe for a plus one? He asked. Jace had nodded. The two had shaken hands, and that was that. They'd been friends ever since. It hadn't mattered after that bonding moment that Aiden and Jace didn't have a lot in common. Jace didn't care that Aiden dressed like a slob, in baggy jeans and faded t-shirts and dirty scuffed boots, and Aiden didn't care that Jace dressed like a little adult, in pressed khaki slacks and button-down shirts and old-fashioned sneakers. It didn't matter that Jace was more interested in art and music than academics, and that Aiden loved learning things and got straight A's, something that contributed to his classmates' disdain, what was wrong with being smart? It wasn't a problem that Jace was obsessed with reading novels and, and collecting old clocks, and that Aiden was obsessed with his ropes and pins and hoops and yo-yos. They always found plenty to talk about because Aiden liked to hear about what Jace was doing and Jace liked to hear about what Aiden was doing. They did have some common ground. They both liked to watch old movies and shows on TV, and they both liked to play games, and they both loved Freddy's. They'd been thrilled when Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex had opened up, Fortunately, only a few kids were lined up to get into Freddy's fortress. Aiden and Jace waited just a couple minutes before they were crawling into the first shiny red tube that led into the heart of the maze. Although the tubes that made up the climbing maze might have been designed for the smaller kids, they were large enough for adults to crawl through. About four feet in diameter, the rounded tunnels had plenty of space for even Aiden's tall, gangly frame. Aiden and Jace crawled quickly, when they, ate, when they entered the maze, and it didn't take much time for them to reach the end of the first tube, which was only about 20 feet long. At the end of that twin tw uh, sorry, at the end of that 20 feet, the maze branched out in several directions. Some of the offshoots had ladders attached to the tubing. Aiden thought of these as ladder pipes. They angled up from one level to another like stairs. Some of the tunnels had even sharper angles of ascent. These were studded with big hand and footholds, like the kind on climbing walls, Aiden thought of the D's as climbing pipes. Some tubes climbed more gradually than either the ladder pipes or the climbing pipes, so neither ladder rungs nor hand and footholds were needed. That didn't make any sense to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of the tubes were level, leaning off into far off areas of the maze before heading upward. And some of the tubes were slides. Aiden and Jace liked those the best. Listening to Jace puff along behind him, Aiden pointed to one of the level tunnels. Let's go this way, he said. He wanted to get deep into the labyrinth of the fortress, as far away from life as possible. I'm right behind you, Jace said unnecessarily. Aiden led the way into what was now a bright orange tunnel. Although the tunnels were formed of transparent plastic that allowed you to see through them, the plastic was tinted in a variety of bright colours, some solid coloured and some multicoloured, in mind-blowing patterns like stripes or polka dots or illusions similar to the pinwheel shapes of the entrance. A few tunnels were just plain clear plastic, some were so black they were nearly opaque. At first, Aidan and Jace had hypothesised that the colours and patterns were designations to help navigate the maze, but after exploring the fortress for hours, they hadn't discerned any logical order to the colours. The various shades seemed to be as random as the twists and turns, rises and drops in the fortress. In addition to the many hued passageways in the maze, the fortress contained intriguing, ever-shifting mirrored partitions. These partitions seemed to show up suddenly and randomly. A tunnel could be wide open one minute, and a couple of minutes later, it was blocked off with one of the mirrors. These mirrors fascinated Aiden and Jace. The first time they'd encountered one blocking a section that had been open when they passed it just moments before, they'd started trying to figure out the timing and location of the mirrors. They assumed the mirrors showed up to further confuse the already bewildering layout of the maze. They definitely had that effect. One afternoon the previous week, it had taken Aiden and Jace over an hour to find their way around one such suddenly appearing mirror so they could make their way back out of the maze. Now Aiden led Jace past one of the mirrors. He paused at a junction of another tunnel 
leading to the left and a climbing pipe heading up and to the right. Which way? he asked Jace. Your turn to choose. Jace wiggled up next to Aiden and assessed his options. He looked to both sides and straight ahead. Because the pipes in the fortress were transparent, they could see into other pipes around them. To their left, a couple of girls were crawling around a bend leading away from where Aiden and Jace crouched. To the right, a couple tubes over, a tussle headed toddler was being uh, towed along by a clearly exasperated older girl. She was probably the little kid's sister. Jace pointed at the ladder tube. Let's go up. Maybe we'll find one of those long twisty slides. I like those. Aiden grinned. He liked the twisty slides too. They started at the top of the three-story high fortress, and they ended up on the venue level of the pizzaplex. Because they wound around in a tight spiral, the ride down was long and fun. Unfortunately though, to get to the top of a slide, you had to figure out the way to the climbing to the correct climbing pipes to get to the top of the fortress. Aiden and Jace had only found the top of the curlicue slides. I don't know how to say that word, I'm sorry. Three times. Maybe they'd get lucky today. You lead, Aiden told Jace. Jace nodded and reached for the closest bright purple handhold on the blue and pink swell patterned climbing pipe walls. Aiden waited for Jace to work his way up the tube a few feet before Aiden started following his friend. He took a deep breath, inhaling the familiar smell of the maze. The pipes in the fortress had a sort of chemical odour. Aiden figured it was the plastic. In addition to that sharp smell, the pipes sometimes smelled like sweat or dirty socks. Layered over the smell was the scent of the disinfectant spray that Haps applied liberally as he made his way through the maze. Skirting around a wad of chewing gum, Aiden thought about Haps. He and Jace had discussed the robot a lot. They had concluded Haps was a programming marvel. Not only was Haps designed to get kids out of trouble in the maze, he was also a janitorial and maintenance bot. His technology apparently was cutting edge. Aiden had read up on it after they had encountered him in their first time in the maze. According to the articles, Aiden found um, Freddy's Fortress had been the subject of heated debate when it was first proposed. Smaller versions of the climbing and sliding tubes had been tried in other famous kid-focused pizza places and they'd been a big disaster. The problem wasn't just safety. Yes, little kids sometimes got stuck or hurt themselves when they fell. Once, Aiden read, a fire and rescue team had to be called in to ex ex extricate... God, that's, that's a really weird word to extricate a teen who'd been a little too big to round a corner in one of the pipes. Stuck kids, however, weren't the real issue with climbing pipes. The real drawback to the installations was sanitation. When they were first built in the other pizza places, employees were sent into the pipes several times a day to try to keep them clean. This job, however, was too big and too unpleasant for a minimum wage employee to do well. Hygiene became a big concern. Many parents refused to let their kids go into the tubes something that led to frequent noisy public trans tantrums. Some of the restaurant managers had the climbing pipes removed. The pipe mazes were nearly phased out of the other restaurant chains, but eventually larger pi pipes were built to prevent stuck teens, and better cleaning procedures were put into place. Proponents of Freddy's Fortress had pointed to the relative success of the other chains' newest pipe mazes to argue for the inclusion of the fortress in the pizzaplex. Opponents to Freddy's fortress had argued that the massive size of the fortress maze would multiply safety and cleaning issues exponentially. The idea was nearly scrapped until the tech geniuses at Fazbear Entertainment came up with HAPS. They programmed HAPS to be so efficient and autonomous that no human employee ever had to go in the fortress. Haps kept the entire network of pipes sparkling clean and hygienic, and in good repair, and he made sure no big jerks got stuck. At the top of their climb, Jace paused to catch his breath. As, J as Jace wiped his face, Aiden waited patiently. The climbing holds in the tubes were placed close together, so even the smallest kids could use them, and the angles of ascent in the tubes weren't extreme. It wasn't hard to work your way up through the fortress. Jace, however, wasn't in the best shape. Given that his only physical activities were picking up a book or tinkering with the clocks he liked to collect, he got out of breath pretty easily. We have four choices here, Jay said finally. I don't see any sign of a slide. Aiden glanced down the lateral tunnels, extending out from their current location. Nope, no slides. To the left though, down one of the angled tunnels, Aiden could see three little kids. Aiden pointed. Let's go if we can let... 
Let's go see if we can scare some munchkins. Jace laughed. Good idea. He crawled into the tunnel Aiden had indicated. Aiden followed. The new tunnel twisted sharply three times before winding around to a pipe that intersected with the one the little kids were in. Jace paused at the entrance to the intersecting pipe. Assuming a soldier-like demeanour, Jace made a series of convoluted hand motions designed to mimic those he and Aiden had seen in action movies. First, Jace pointed at his eyes, then at Jaden, at Jaden's eyes. Jaden, that's their shipping name. Um, at Aiden's eyes, and then at the little kids, who were crawling happily, completely oblivious of their watchers. Jace made a circular gesture at the intersection pipe. Then he made a sort of crawling motion with his fingers. He used his other hand to make a larger crawling motion before dropping his second hand onto his first hand, apparently indicating a surprise ambush. Aiden laughed. Jace immediately put her finger to his hip to his lips and gave Aiden a mock stern a mock stern look. What is a mock stern look? Um Oh a mock stern look. Aiden stifled his laughter and pretended to zip his lips. Of course, all this pantomime was ridiculously unnecessary. Even if they'd laughed un uproariously and even yelled their lungs out, the little kids would have barely heard them. The pipes in Freddy's fortress were surprisingly well sound insulated. Aiden had read up on that too. Apparently the plastic used to form all the pipes in the maze wasn't ordinary plastic. Some kind of special polymer had been included in the mix to soundproof the tubes. They weren't completely soundproof, obviously, but they muted sound enough that between the plastic and the loud music and crowd noise filling the pizzaplex, sound didn't carry far in the maze. Jace made a with me motion, and he crawled into the intersecting pipe. Aiden followed. They crawled about 30 feet or so before Jace came to a stop and held a fist. Jaden grinned and obediently stopped too. Jace pointed to his right. They were close enough to the little kids now that they could hear them. There were three of them, two boys and a girl. The girl seemed to be the one in charge of the little group. She sounded really bossy. We need to go up here first, Bobby. This is the right way, she said in a norm, uh, in a mum-like tone. But I want to go down the slide. <laughs> oh no, why did I even choose to do these voices? Yeah, me too, the second boy said. You're both stupid, the bossy girl said. Jace looked over his shoulder at Aiden. He mimed sticking a finger down his throat. Aiden understood. Jace had a bossy older sister. He probably sympathised with Bobby and the other boy. Jace held up a finger, then two fingers. Aiden positioned himself to follow Jace's lead. Jace held up a third finger, then he pointed. Jace and Aiden let out blood-curdling screams and crawled furiously around the bend. They crowded in next to each other. With faces contorted into monster-like expressions, they reached out as if to grab the little kids. All three kids, who looked to be maybe five or six, screamed. One of the boys, a small kid with straggly brown hair, screamed louder than the others. The other boy, round-faced and dark-skinned, didn't just scream, he turned to scurry away. The girl, a cute blonde with bright blue eyes, stopped screaming almost as quickly as she started. She instantly figured out that Aiden and Jace were messing with her and her friends. She had been startled into screaming, but she wasn't scared of them. Sitting back on her heels, the girl put her hands on her hips, wearing red pants, a black shirt, and a red and black striped headband. The little girl looked like a pint-sized fierce warrior. All she needed was face paint to complete her look. Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> the girl glared at Aiden and Jace. You're mean, she said. Aiden lunged forward and roared at her. It was a good roar, but it didn't bother the girl at all. Instead of reacting to Aiden, she elbowed the boy next to her. He was still screaming, Shut up, Bobby. It's just a couple big stupid boys being jerks. Bobby, who had screwed up his eyes, his face bright red, opened his eyes. He stopped screaming. The girl turned and looked at the retreating boy. Get back here, Marlo. Stop being a scaredy cat. Aiden looked at Jace, who was staring at the girl with a wide-eyed frown. He looked like he couldn't decide whether to be surprised by the girl's nonchalance or annoyed by it. The girl turned back to Aiden and Jace. You're stupid, she announced. Stupid seemed to be her favourite word. Suddenly, Aiden felt pretty stupid. Why did he and Jace think it was so much fun to torment little kids? You're bullies too. 
the little girl said. She started crawling toward them. Now get out of the way, or I'll punch you. Aiden didn't doubt the girl would follow through with her threat. He nudged Jace, and the two teens turned to crawl away into the another pipe. <laughs> L plus ratio. <laughs> they weren't running away or anything, obviously. Who ran from a five-year-old? Aiden's ego wanted him to be clear on that as he and Jace crawled. So why did they retreat so quickly? Well, for sure it wasn't that Aiden was afraid of a five-year-old girl's punch. The real reason he wanted to get away from the girl as fast as possible was that he didn't think his ego could survive being bested by the munchkin he'd been trying to scare. Served them right, he figured. Scaring little kids wasn't exactly a nice thing to do. Yeah, that's right, the little girl called out behind them. Run away and don't come back. Aiden didn't bother responding to the little powerhouse. He was ashamed of himself. Apparently Jace wasn't feeling too good about himself either. He didn't say anything for several minutes as Aiden led him through a series of several twisting tubes. Finally, at a junction with three new pipe offshoots, Aiden stopped and looked back at Jace. Do you feel as big as a jerk as I do? He asked his friend. Jace dropped his head. Yeah. They sat in silence for a few seconds. Aiden gazed past Jace to watch little kids in other pipes. Then he craned his neck to look down onto the main walkway of the pizzaplex. He suddenly wished he and Jace were down there having fun, instead of being up here trying to take out their frustrations on poor little kids. Not that the little girl had fit that description at all. Jace nudged Aiden. Let's find a slide and then get out of here. Good idea. You lead. Jace nodded. He crawled into the nearest pipe opening. Aiden went in behind him. A few pe- eh. A few feet along the new pipe, Jace started to lead them past the pink offshoot tube to the right. Suddenly he gasped and faltered. What? Aiden asked. He squeezed up to his friend to look down at the pink tube. Jace laughed sheepishly. It's just Haps. He surprised me is all. Aiden didn't tease Jace for his reaction. Aiden could see how Haps had startled Jace. The robot was only a couple feet away, facing a green tube that led off from the pink tube. Haps' big foam hands were pressed against the heavy plastic on either side of the green tube's opening. Aiden could see that beyond the hole, the tube's green plastic was bulging abnormally. Apparently sensing Aiden and Jace watching him, Haps rotated his squarish head and smiled widely. Hey Haps, Jace said. Hello. Haps said in a chirpy tone. I didn't know what voice to give it. I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> Haps' voice was robotic and stiff, but it was pitched high and came out in a cheerful sing-song cadence. I'm Haps. Are you lost? From what Aiden and Jace had discovered in their previous encounters with Haps, this was Haps' go-to first line. No, we're fine, Haps, Aiden said. I am happy to hear that you are fine. Ha Haps re re uh, replied. Conversation wasn't Haps' forte. He was a pretty quiet robot. Besides his few simple phrases, the only sounds Haps emitted were the hums and whirs of his servos and the churning of the black rubber th treads that he used to get around. The treads took the place of legs and feet. In spite of Haps' stiff speech, he was likeable. The robot was clearly designed to make kids feel safe. About two and a half feet tall, Haps appeared to be made of a combination of plastic, metal, rubber and foam. Haps' torso was shaped like an isosceles quadrandal. Oh my gosh, damn it, I almost did that right. Haps' torso was shaped like an isosceles quadrangle. What is a quadrangle? I did math at uni. <laughs> I don't know what a quadrangle is. A fact Aiden was proud to know, he liked geometry, and it was made of grey metal. It might be like a... Is it, is it like a trapezoid? A, a trapezium? I don't know. And it was made of grey metal. Uh, a couple of small doors were inset in the torso. Aiden wasn't sure what they were for. Articulated metal arms, grey except for black and yellow security stripes painted on the biceps area, extended from the quadrangle sides. The arms ended up in... Uh, sorry, the arms ended in big white foam hands that looked like the weird number one foam hands that kids wore at football games. A round plastic head sat on the short edge of the quadrangle-shaped torso. 
The head was topped with a flashing yellow security light. Although Haps' big rubber treads and grey metal gave him a vaguely tank-like appearance, his face countered that with an industrial look. Featuring bright yellow eyes, round cheeks of more black and yellow striped paint, and a large tilted mouth full of backlit, grinning teeth, Haps had a friendly demeanour. As Aiden and Jace looked on, Haps lifted one of his big foam hands and gave the teens a thumbs up. Aiden and Jace returned the gesture. As soon as they did, Haps turned back to the opening of the green tube in front of them. Something clicked, and a swishing sound accompanied the sudden appearance of a mirror. The mirror slid into place like a spaceship door, blocking the green tube. As soon as the mirror partition settled, Haps turned and trundled on down the offshoot, away from Aiden and Jace. As he went, one of the little doors on Haps' torso opened, and a third arm unfolded from the opening. On a telescoping extender, the arm ended in a curved sponge that wiped the pipe's interior as Haps passed through it. The arm moved so fast it was hard to follow it. Not only was the arm sponging, it was also spraying the floral-smelling disinfectant that Haps used liberally. The sponging and spraying made Haps look like uh, a miniature mobile car wash. That was cool, Jace said. Aiden pushed, uh, pulled his gaze from Haps. He nodded and crawled past Jace into the pink tube. He poked at the mirror that had just appeared. There has to be some mechanism here. He ran his fingers along the edge of the mirror. Jace crawled up next to him, and he too prodded the edges of the mirror. I don't think Haps is a wizard, so yeah, you're right. The mirror didn't come out of nothing. The boys explored the edges of the mirror for another minute or so. They found nothing. Aiden plopped back on his butt, crossing his legs. I think I know why these mirrors show up. Why? Before this mirror blocked the opening, I saw what looked like a problem with the tube. I wonder if they used the mirrors as barriers to shut off parts of the maze that need maintenance. Kind of like emergency doors that close in on a submarine if it starts to take on water. Chase nodded. That makes more sense than using them to confuse us. And for sure they'd have a way of handling problems. They wouldn't want to have to shut down the whole fortress if there's an issue in one area. Aiden gave the mirror one last look, then nudged Jace. Come on, let's stop hassling little kids. Let's see if we can find Haps again. Maybe he'll lead us somewhere interesting. Aiden pointed down the pink tube. Haps was no longer in sight because the pink corridor took several sharp turns, and another tube bisected it. That tube obscured the view of the pink pipe behind the turns. But Haps couldn't have gone far. Uh, Haps couldn't have gone too far. From what Aiden had seen, Haps' rubber treads didn't appear to be built for speed. Sure, why not? Jace agreed. You lead now. Aiden nodded and started crawling down the pink tube. He led Jace around the bends, then paused when he encountered six different options. Because there because they were at the top of the maze, none of the tubes led upward. Three were lateral, and three headed downward. Two of those three had gradual descents meant for more crawling. One of the three was a slide, a bright blue see-through pipe canted in a sharp descent. Hey, Jay said, panting as he reached Aiden's side. You found a slide. Aiden nodded. He looked at the other tube openings. He was conflicted. He wanted to find Haps again, but the slides were fun. I know what you're thinking, Jay said. We were going to look for Haps, but what if he went down the slide too? That's a good point, Aiden turned toward the slide opening. Let's go for it. Aiden flipped onto his butt so he could wriggle into the slide feet first. He listened to Jay slither into place behind him. Hang on to my belt loop, Aiden said. Don't worry, I will, Jay replied. I haven't forgotten. Jace was talking about the second time they'd found a curling slide. About halfway down, they'd gotten split up when the slide forked and sent them in opposite directions. Um, sorry. Fortunately, they both managed to find their way to the maze's exit pretty quickly, and they'd re-entered the maze together. The next time they'd used the slide, they'd made sure they were hooked together so they ended up in the same place. Really? Aiden asked. Oh, sorry, I completely misread that. Ready? Aiden asked. Ready. Aiden pushed off the slide walls, and he and Jace whooped as they shot downward, whipping around a sharp curve, skimming through the fluorescent blue tube, or blue, blue pipe. Aiden felt cool air on his face, and for an instant, he felt free. 
If only he could get that instant to last forever. Even though Aiden kept busy with his hooping and juggling and yo-yoing and jump roping and he got great grades, he wasn't exactly happy. The truth was, Aiden pretty much hated his life. He often wished he could have a do-over. He knew he couldn't change his looks, but maybe if he hadn't tried to compensate for them by learning weird skills, other kids would have taken him more seriously. Maybe his parents would have paid more attention to him. Maybe. Aiden shot out of the blue pipe and landed in a dimly lit pit filled with glow-in-the-dark rubber balls. Jace tumbled over Aiden, then popped upright. The two swam through the balls through toward a neon-marked opening on the far side of the pit. As soon as they were out of the pit, they crawled into a yellow and purple striped pipe. It was one of three options, and they picked it randomly. That was a good one, Jace panted as they crawled. Yeah, Aiden agreed. He stopped at a junction with another pipe. He gestured at it. You want to go that way, or do you want to keep going straight? Jace looked at the nearby opaque pipe that led to the left. He pointed down the, le the yellow and purple one. Let's keep going. I don't really like dark tubes. Aiden nodded. Yeah, I am with you on that. Aiden continued leading the way as they crawled on. As they made their way through the purple and yellow striped pipe, Aiden could see other kids crawling, climbing and sliding through the pipes to the left of the one he and Jace were in. On the right, the pipe's walls were mostly mirrored. Occasionally though, a break in the mirroring gave Aiden a glimpse of a huge knotted network of pipes that appeared to be completely empty of kids. After a few feet, the yellow and purple pipes started ascending slowly. They continued crawling, and they crawled, and they crawled. The pipe went up gradually for a while, and then levelled out. Aiden figured, by then, they were probably on the second story level of the pizzaplex. He thought they'd encounter a, encounter a junction leading to other pipes, but they didn't. Instead, the yellow and purple pipe continued on, now sloping downward just as gradually as it had climbed upward. The whole time they crawled, Aiden could see other kids in tubes to his left, but on his right, the pipe was either mirrored or overlooking the apparently deserted area. The pipe they were in appeared to encircle a section of the maze that no one else could get into. Aiden wasn't sure how long they crawled before they found themselves right back where they'd started. They recognised the spot because they could see the glow-in-the-dark balls in the pit at the base of the slide. Wow, Jay said. That was a big circle. We crawled for 14 minutes and 42 seconds. Leave it to Jace to keep the time. Did we miss an offshoot? Aiden asked. Jace shook his head. Besides the dark pipe, I didn't see any options. Aiden cocked his head. That means the path of the maze inside the circle we just made is like its own thing. Did you see that? No one was in those pipes. I noticed that. It would be great to check it out. There has to be a way to get to it. Well, Jace said. If all those mirrors are partitions, like you think, they're blocking the way, that means there's no way we can get in. Aiden looked toward where they'd passed the black pipe opening. Unless the dark tube leads into the area. Oh, right. It might. You want to go see? Aiden asked. Sure. This time, Jace took the lead. He crawled down the yellow and purple tube until they reached the dark offshoot. There, he paused and looked over his shoulder. I'm with you, Aiden said. Jace nodded and headed into the near, nearly, dark, nearly blackened plastic pipe. The dark pipe wasn't straight. It switched left, then right, and then left every few feet, like a back-and-forth trail going up a steep incline. The incline, however, wasn't steep enough to require the repeated turns. It was just as gradual as the one in the yellow and purple tube. After a few minutes of this back-and-forth, Aiden figured they were again at the second story level. Jace stopped. Aiden peered past Jace's shoulder. The dark pipe had dead ended. That's weird, Jace said. We've never found a dead end before. Aiden scooted up next to Jace and put his hands against the smoky plastic. He, he peered through it. He could see the vague outlines of a convoluted matrix of pipes that was completely empty of kids. I wonder why this area is blocked off. If it was for maintenance, wouldn't there be a mirror like the others? Jace asked. Aiden nodded. You'd think. Aiden spotted a join in the plastic. He prodded at it. When the plastic didn't give, he shifted so he could kick at the seam. Maybe if he could dent it, he could grab the edge of it and pull it back. 
What are you doing? Jace asked. I want to see what's in this section. I mean, it has to be huge. And except for the openings blocked off by mirrors, this seems to be the only way in. But if it's sealed off here, maybe it's not safe. Aiden made a face. How unsafe could it be? We're in a pipe maze for little kids. Jace pursed his lips, as if considering the idea. Move back, Aiden said. I need some room to manoeuvre. Jace scooted backward, and Aiden got in position to kick at the partition. Leaning back on his hands, he booted the plastic with his right foot. A sharp crack echoed through the pipe, and the seam between the pipe and the partition expanded, by about an, en by about an eighth of an inch, if that. Aiden grunted and shifted again. He tried to stick his pinky into the opening. The space wasn't big enough. Aiden used the side of his fist to pound on the seam. It didn't give. He looked at Jace. Can I borrow your knife? <clears throat> Jace dug out his Swiss army knife. He fiddled with it, opening it to a file. This might be the best tool. He handed the knife to Aiden. Aiden stuck the file's tip into the seam between the pipe wall and our partition. He pushed the file in and attempted to pry the two apart. It didn't work. He switched out the file for the knife itself, and he started stabbing at the partition. Maybe he could cut it open. No, that didn't work either. The plastic was too hard. Aiden closed the knife and handed it back to Jace. He positioned himself so he could kick at the partition again. Jace backed up to give him room. Aiden pummeled the partition with both feet this time. It didn't work any better than his, than his one-foot assault had, but maybe if he did it several times, it would weaken. Aiden braced himself and kicked again, and again. Each time he kicked, the pipe they were in shook and wavered back and forth a little, but still the partition remained in place. Aiden repositioned, trying to get more leverage for a more powerful kick. Before he could unleash the kick, Jace tapped him on the shoulder. Aiden turned to find Hap smiling at him. Hello, I'm Haps. Are you lost? Aiden felt his cheeks flush. He knew he shouldn't have been doing what he'd been doing, and he'd been caught by a robot. But still. Hi, Haps, Jace said innocently. No, we're fine. Haps' yellow eyes dimmed for an instant, then brightened again. His smile widened. His big teeth glowed. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Haps reached out an oversized foam hand and tried to take Jace's arm. Hey! Jace protested. He jerked his arm away from Haps. We're not lost, Aiden told Haps. We don't need your help. Haps ignored Aiden. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Aiden rolled his eyes. Yeah, we got that. Thanks, but no thanks. We're fine. I'm sorry we were messing with the ball here. We were just curious, but we're fine. We can find our way out. Haps' smile brightened to a nearly blinding level of illumination. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Once again, Haps reached for Jace. Aiden quickly leaned forward between Haps and his friend. He threw his shoulder into Haps. The robot skidded back a few inches. Aiden was surprised at how lightweight Haps was. Encouraged, he pushed at Haps with both hands. Go on, Aiden said. Go away. We're fine. The light in Haps' eyes blinked several times. Haps appeared to look past Aiden and Jace, as if he was appraising the, the partition. Then Haps looked directly at Aiden. You are lost. I will lead you- Shut up! Aiden shouted. He shoved Haps another time. Haps scooted away. But then he tried to churn closer again. Aiden was fed up. Aiden and Jace had liked Haps. They'd thought he was friendly. Now the robot was being as bossy as everyone else in Aiden's life. Aiden's head was suddenly filled with the voices of his parents and teachers and classmates. Do this, Aiden. Don't do that, Aiden. Hurry up, Aiden. You're not doing that right, Aiden. You're a freak, Aidon. With a shriek of frustration and rage, Aiden pushed his legs back and kicked out at Haps as hard as he could. Jace, his face red, as if he too had lost it, squirmed around so he could also kick at Haps. Together, the teens pounded on the robot with their feet battering Haps back against the side of the pipe. Haps made no effort to defend himself. His eyes remained bright, and he continued to smile. He kept smiling even when the teen's kicks cracked his plastic head and snapped Haps' arm joints, leaving his foam hands dangling. 
He also continued to smile when the pipe started to gyrate, swinging back and forth as if no longer anchored, and his smile went on when the pipe popped loose and plunged down into darkness. Aiden landed on his back, hard. His head whacked something solid beneath him, a sharp flash of pain radiated down his spine. He groaned, and for a few seconds he lay still while he tried not to panic. Had he broken anything? Aiden tentatively moved his hands, then his arms and legs. Everything seemed to be working okay. Moving slowly, Aiden felt around. His upper body, sti his upper body still seemed to be in the plastic pipe. He could feel its smooth, curved sides. But he could also feel behind its sides. It appeared to have broken open when it fell. Aiden elbowed himself up into a sitting position. Jace? Aiden heard Jace groan. Are you okay, Jace? Jace coughed. Yeah, I just... He noisily sucked in air. I think I just got the wind knocked out of me. Aiden blinked and looked around. When they first started to fall, he'd felt like they were dropping into total blackness. But now he realised he could see his surroundings. The lighting was dim, but his eyes were adjusting to the shadows. He could tell they'd landed inside the area they'd been trying to reach. Well, okay, this wasn't the most efficient way to get in. But they were in. Aiden heard a scrape, and he looked over to see Jace sit up. Jace rotated his head to scan the area around them. Where's Haps? Jace asked. Aiden cringed. He'd forgotten about Haps. He looked all around too, but he didn't see the robot. Had Haps avoided the fall? Haps must not have fallen in with us, Jace said. Aiden looked up, just as he did. He heard a hiss, and he watched what appeared to be a clear partition cover the space had just fallen through. He blinked. Hey, Jace, look. He pointed at the clear partition. Jace looked up. He frowned. What is it? A partition just slid into place up there, just like it did in that other pipe. But it's not a mirror. We can see through it. Look. Jace rubbed his head, then tilted it to gaze upward. You know what? Aiden said. I think those mirrors are two-way. On the other side, it looks like a mirror. But in the closed-off area, it's like glass. See? Jace nodded. Aiden looked around. I think we're the only ones in this section. What about them? Jace pointed. Aiden looked in the direction of Jace's finger. Then he examined their surroundings again. It appeared as if Aiden and Jace had fallen into a junction area in the closed off web of pipes. Four corridors opened up off the junction, which was now sealed above them. Beyond the corridors, which were transparent like all the other pipes in the fortress, the main part of the maze was visible. Jace was pointing at a group of kids who appeared to be crawling past the junction just a few feet away. Obviously though, the kids couldn't see them. The two-way mirror partitions hid Jace and Aiden from view. Aiden carefully shifted onto his hands and knees. Well, we might as well explore. We have this whole area to ourselves. And it's huge. Aiden threw out a hand to indicate the separate area of the maze. Jace grinned and nodded. He rubbed at a scrape on his elbow. It's like our own town. Aiden and Jaceville. Aiden laughed. He gave Jace a playful punch. He has such a dork. Yeah, and proud of it. Jace gazed at the pipe openings around them. Which way do you want to go first? Aiden shrugged. You pick. I don't think it matters. Let's just go and see where we end up. Works for me. Aiden gestured for Jace to take the lead. Jace pointed at one of the openings and the boys crawled into a glittery red pipe. The red pipe led to a midnight blue pipe, which led to a lime green one. Some of the pipes went up, some went down, some seemed to wind in concentric circles that returned them to where they started. They climbed up ladder pipes, they scaled climbing pipes, they crawled left and right and straight. The whole time they were exploring, they could see other kids in the pipes outside the separated area. Being apart from those kids made Aiden feel special. He liked it a lot. At one point, when Jace paused to catch his breath, Aiden pointed at a tube that looked like it ascended gradually. Let's go that way next. We might find a hidden slide. After you, Jace said. Aiden led Jace into the ascending pipe, which was a deep golden colour. Beyond the pipe, Aiden could see the roller coaster track, and as he watched, the cars streaked past. As they continued to climb, he was able to look out at the rest of the pizza plex. The higher they got, the smaller the people down below looked. Being up here above their pint-sized forms made Aiden feel important. 
or at least more important than he usually felt. This perspective of the people in the pizzaplex had always been available to them in the maze, but somehow it was better now that Aiden knew they were invisible to the people outside the maze. He liked the anon anonymity it gave them. The month before, Jace had asked J uh, Aiden what superhero power he'd choose if he could have one. Flying? Amazing strength? Teleporting? X-ray vision? I'd go for strength, Jace had said. I'd be the amazing little strong guy. He laughed and pointed at Aiden. Which power would you pick? Invisibility, Aiden had answered without any thought at all. If he was invisible, he wouldn't be judged for how he looked. And he could go wherever he wanted to. He'd be in control. Being hidden in the section of the maze was kind of like that. He and Jace could go wherever they wanted inside the partitioned off area. No one could see them do it. No one could stop them. Aiden and Jace passed up every offshoot they encountered as they climbed up and up in circuitous, circuitous, circuitous. Oh my god, that's that's a really weird word. So I'm going to say circuitous path to the highest level of the maze. They figured when they reached the top, they'd stay up there and look for a slide, but it took a while to reach the top because they stuck with a slowly ascending pipe instead of opting for a ladder pipe or a pipe with climbing holds. That was okay, they were in no hurry. When the pipe they crawled through leveled out, they had the choice of three offshoots. The first one they chose meandered around on the upper level for a while before leading them in a convoluted series of twists and turns back to where they started. They tried the other offshoot and it took them on a long loop around the deserted area. Eventually though, the long loop hooked up with an intersecting pipe and that one led to a slide. At the top of the slide, which was made of burnt orange plastic, Jace pointed at the steepness of its descent. This one might go straight down, he said. Might be the fastest one we've found. Aiden grinned. Let's find out. Just as they had for the other slide, they positioned themselves in tandem and Jace hung on to Aiden's belt loop. Ready? Aiden asked. Let her rip. Aiden pushed off and the boys shot downward so fast that Aiden felt like they were falling off a cliff. For a second his heart vaulted into his mouth and adrenaline flooded his system. The adrenaline ushered a chilling thought into Aiden's brain. What if this section wasn't finished? What would be at the bottom of the slide? Thankfully, Aiden didn't have long to fret about this idea. The slide dropped them in a flash. But in the last instant, the slide levelled out and they slipped off it, skidding across the slick, curved bottom of a clear plastic pipe that extended across the bottom floor of the pizzaplex. When their momentum ran out, they came to a stop at the juncture of two other pipes. Wow, Jace breathed. That was a rush. Aiden nodded. He shifted to his knees. As he did, his stomach growled. He looked at his watch. We've been in here for almost two hours, Jace. No wonder I'm hungry. It's been almost four hours since we ate that pizza. Jace checked his own watch. You're right. He dug in the pocket of his jeans, and he pulled out one of the fancy dark chocolate and macadamia candy bars he liked. One half? Aiden looked at the crumbled bar. It wasn't exactly appetising, but he nodded. Thanks. Aiden got into a cross-legged position next to Jace, who was sitting with his legs splayed where he'd ended up after the slide. The two boys sat side by side in the pipe, eating the mostly melted chocolate and crunchy nuts. Through the two-way mirror, they could see into the dining area, which was full of happy families scarfing down pizzas and swilling soda. Trying to unstick part of a nut from his back teeth, Aiden realised how thirsty he was. Aiden fer fervently wished they could get to the dining area so they could have a soda and order another pizza. As soon as he had had that thought, Another thought tumbled into his head. This one wasn't as nice as thinking about pizza and soda. This thought, Aiden realised, was a disturbing cousin to the one he'd had on the slide. In fact, it was a thought that had been nagging him ever since he'd wondered what might be at the bottom of the slide. When Aiden had realised this part of the maze might not be finished, and he was glad he was wrong about that, another thought had popped into his head. What if this part of the maze was effectively closed off from the rest of it? So much so that they couldn't get out. Jace? Aiden said, turning to look at his friend. Yeah? Jace licked chocolate off his fingers. I think we might want to start looking for a way out of this section. Jace got up on his hands and knees. Oh, I've been kind of looking already. Actually, I thought the slide might take us out, but 
I figured the way out has to be on the bottom of the maze or the top. We pretty much went entirely around the middle of it when we found it. True, but the slide didn't do it. You think? Aiden winked at his friend. Jace rolled his eyes. I'm thirsty. Let's find a way out. Aiden got on his hands and knees. He winced. Not only was his back still, store, still sore from the fall, his knees were starting to protest all the crawling. Jace groaned when he got to his knees, too. Sure wish we had some knee pads. Aiden laughed. Yeah, that would be nice. He took a deep breath. Any ideas of how to find an exit? You're the thinker, Jace said. What do you think we should do? Aiden considered their alternatives. Finally, he said, let's try to be systematic. Explore every main pipe and try each offshoot one by one. What do you think? Jace gazed out at the enclosure of entwined pipes. This place is big, but it's not that big. We should be able to find the way out if we do that. Aiden couldn't miss the doubt in Jace's voice. Jace clearly wasn't sure he believed what he was saying. Aiden understood. He had similar concerns. If this part of the maze was deserted, that must mean it was sealed off. And if it was sealed off, that probably meant it had no exit. But maybe Aiden was wrong. You can lead, Jace said. Your memory is better than mine. You can keep track of where we've been and where we haven't been. Aiden nodded and set off ahead of Jace. Envisioning everywhere they'd explored so far, he led Jace to the left, heading toward a pipe they hadn't yet tried. From there, he attempted to make their trek through the pipes as sequential as possible, ticking off the sections on a mental checklist as they went. Unfortunately, Aiden wasn't wrong. No matter how many turns, ascents and descents they made, they couldn't find a way out of the partitioned off area. It was Jace who admitted defeat first. When they'd retraced their path along a main pipe for the second time, Jace said, Hold up. Aiden stopped and looked at his friend. Jace sat back on his butt. We're trapped in here, aren't we? Aiden got off his knees and sat too. He leaned against the curved wall of the pipe. He let his head drop against the plastic. Aiden gazed through the other side of the pipe. Beyond it, he could see a little girl riding a Freddy replica on the carousel. The little girl's head was thrown back. Even though Aiden couldn't hear her, he knew she was laughing. Aiden? Aiden shifted his gaze to Jace. He noticed that a vein at Jace's temple was throbbing at a strobe-like pace. Aiden realised his heart was matching the rhythm. They were both scared. Yeah, Jace. I think we're trapped. Aiden could hear Jace's breathing quicken. The vein pulsed even faster. Jace's eyes filled with tears. He quickly wiped his face with the back of his hand. Aiden wanted to tell Jace it was okay if he wanted to cry because Aiden wanted to cry too, but he couldn't get his mouth to work. Aiden cleared his throat and licked his lips. He opened his mouth, but before he could speak, a muffled scratching sound stopped him. Jace inhaled sharply and spun around to look toward the sound. What was that? Aiden frowned and shook his head. Both he and Jace cocked their heads, listening intently. At first, they heard nothing but then a distant scrape was followed by a faint crackle of static. Both boys tensed. Neither made a sound. For several more seconds, they listened. Then Jace exhaled. Aiden realised he'd been holding his breath too. He let it out. Jace glanced over at Aiden. Do we want to think about what that was? Aiden shook his head. Better to think about how to get out of here. Jace nodded. He rubbed his face. Okay. Let's think this through. Okay. We've been looking for an exit, and we haven't found one. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. Jace winced. Sorry, Jace. I'm not at my best. I get it. Several seconds of silence passed. Finally, Aiden encouraged Jace to continue. Go on. You sounded like you were leading up to an idea. Jace sighed. Well, it's not a very good one. A not very good one is better than none at all. And I've got nothing. Jace bit his lower lip. Then he leaned forward. Okay, so we know there's an opening on the second level where we were trying to get through that partition. But if we can find our way back there and we work at that seam some more, that partition might have weakened when the pipe fell. We weren't able to pry it open from the other side, but maybe we could from this side. Aiden frowned. 
but the pipe on the other side of that seam is what fell. We'd have nowhere to go from there even if we did get through the partition. Jay shook his head. The part of the pipe that fell was only three feet or so long. If we could get the partition loose, we could use it as a bridge to cross that opening. Well, we might be able to pry the partition open, but what if we can't get it completely loose? Aiden asked. Jace twisted his mouth. Well, we might be able to swing ourselves across, like like, like hang, hang from the pipe on one side and then swing over to the other, like on the bars in gym class. Aiden thought about the idea. It was pretty weak. He and Jace were ridiculously unathletic, and even if they were strong and coordinated, broken climbing pipes were different from gymnastic bars. But did Aiden have anything better? Before Aiden could respond, Jace gave Aiden a weak grin as he pulled out his Swiss army knife, and I still have my mighty sword. Aiden laughed. He painfully returned it to his returned to his knees. Okay, Sir Jace, let's do this. Lead on. Jace tried to keep his grin in place as he also returned to his knees. Aiden pretended the grin was effective and he pretended he didn't hear Jace's occasional whimpers as Jace led them quickly back to the spot Aiden had tried to break through before they had fallen into the area. Although getting to the right place wasn't a problem, finding the seam took a little effort. It was, after all, just the narrowest of slits in the plastic along one short section of pipe. Both Aiden and Jace had to feel their way along the wall of the pipe to find it. As soon as they located the seam, Jace pulled out his knife. Flipping out the main blade, he began sawing along the scant opening that Aiden had created earlier. Aiden could do nothing but watch. He had no knife of his own. After a few minutes, Jace dropped his hand. It's not working! He wiped his eyes again. Aiden leaned past Jace's shoulder to examine the opening. Then he leaned closer still. His heart did a little stutter, step of hope. Actually, yeah it is, he said. Look! Aiden pointed to a series of fine stress fractures along the opening. Whether Jace had made them with his knife or they'd been created when the pipe collapsed, Aiden didn't know. He did, however, think, or hope, that the stress fractures might have weakened the joint enough that he might be able to kick the partition free. When Jace spotted the, the stress fractures, his eyes lit up. Do you think... He didn't finish the thought. Back up. My legs are stronger. I'll do the kicking. Jace nodded and scooted out of the way. Aiden took up position on his butt, propped forward on his hands. Uh, sorry, propped backward on his hands. I don't know why I keep messing up. He pulled in his legs as tight to his body as he uh, could get them, so he could coil up with as much power as possible. Then he thrust his feet out hard and fast. Crack! The plastic protested the impact, but it held. Aiden didn't care. He pulled his knees in and he kicked out again and again. Breathing hard, Aiden paused after the third kick. He sat forward and looked at the seam. The cracks extended further from the opening. He was getting somewhere. He set up to kick some more. On the sixth kick, the plastic gave in. The partition popped loose at the seam, and it swung open like a miniature doorway. Behind Aiden, Jace shouted, Yes! Aiden grinned. Panting, he sat forward and started to grasp the partition. Surely, they'd be able to free it from the other side of the opening too. Help me, Aiden said. Jace scooted up beside Aiden. He started to reach for the plastic. Then he stopped. His hand dropped. He made a little choking sound in his throat. Aiden turned to look at Jace. What's wrong? Jace pointed. Aiden immediately saw what Jace had already seen. Although Jace had been right at the gap that the gap between the partition and the intact pipe was small enough to get across, there was an insurmountable problem on the other side. One of the two-way mirror partitions had been put into place on the far side of the gap. There was no way past that. Aiden collapsed onto his back, utterly defeated. Jace slumped next to him. Sorry, Aiden, Jace said. It was a dumb idea. Aiden shook his head. No, it was... He stopped. From further along the pipe, they were in... A whirring sound was coming with their way. Aiden sat up. Is that haps? he asked. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, Jace cocked his head and listened. The whirring sound was interspersed with a thud and a scrape. If it is, he doesn't sound the way he normally sounds. Aiden stared down the pipe. Jace was right. The robot sounded clunky, like he was damaged. 
The robot's noisy approach got louder. The boys gazed down the length of the tube, waiting. Aiden realised he was holding his breath, and he quietly let it out. Beside him, Jace was trembling and breathing in sharp gasps. Why was Jace afraid? Wasn't Hap's programmed to help kids in the maze? Broken or not, couldn't he get them out? Shouldn't they have been eager to see Haps? Jace got to his knees and aimed himself in the opposite direction from Haps' approach. We need to get out of here, Aiden, he whispered. His words came out so fast they ran together. It took Aiden a second to process what Jace said. In that second, the danger that Jace had intuited uh, came clear. From around a bend in the pipe just a few feet away, Haps appeared, and he did not look happy. His face cracked, one of his eyes dark, and the yellow security light on top of his head sheared away. Haps' signature smile was in place. The smile, however, was incomplete. Half of his glowing teeth were gone, and his up-curved mouth had been shattered on one side. This turned into his cheerful expression into a malevolent sneer. Even though Haps' metal torso appeared to be unscathed, the robot no longer looked friendly. As soon as Haps spotted the boys, he spoke, sort of. His programming had obviously been damaged because only a portion of his usual spiel came through. What he said was, Lost. Out. With me. The words had staticky gaps separating them, and they weren't spoken in Haps' usual sprightly tone. Haps' high-pitched voice had dropped a couple octaves. His tones were low and guttural. They sounded threatening. Oh, okay, I, I said it completely wrong then. <laughs> it wasn't Haps' words that kicked the boys into gear though. It was his hands. Jay shouted, Come on! As he began crawling madly away from Haps. Aiden didn't hesitate. He crawled as fast as he could in Jace's wake. Behind the boys, Haps clattered and scraped his way along. Each scrape made Aiden flinch. His whole body was wound into a knot of tense terror. As Aiden and Jace scrabbled through the tube, Aiden thought about the foam hands that had always made Haps look so harmless and helpful. Those hands were gone. Probably ripped free when the pipe fell, the foam was no longer there to conceal the metallic workings they'd covered. Without the foam, the robot's spiky metal pincers were exposed. But in the few seconds Aiden had looked at Haps, he realised the missing foam hands weren't what made the robot a threat. The pincers had been sheared off as well. Instead of mechanisms that could grip and be useful, Haps now had me uh, lethal metal shards at the end of his arms. His arm joints were damaged as well, so each articulation was jagged. His friendly looking arms had morphed into threatening metal ex extensions protruding from his torso, and he was flailing the menacing sharp edges as the extensions stabbed and slashed at the pipe walls he passed. This way! Jay shouted. He took a left into a descending tube. Before Aiden pushed off to scoot down after Jace, he turned to check on Haps. The mangled robot was rolling toward him, about 15 feet away. Thankfully, Haps wasn't moving at his full speed. Aiden realised this was because one of Haps' treads was hanging partially off its runner, and the other rolling track was askew. This was causing Haps to lurch consistently to his right. The other track was working to put Haps back in the direction Haps wanted to go but the constant oppositional yank and pull made for much slower progress than the robot should have been capable of. Slower, though, was a relative term. In just the few seconds that Aiden spent examining Haps' progress, Haps had almost managed to get within arm's reach of Aiden. Aiden quickly flipped from his knees onto his butt. Pushing off with his hands, he propelled himself down the sloping pipe, wishing as he did that the slope was, sleep was steeper. Although the pipe descended like a slide, it was an anemic slide, probably intended for the smaller kids who were afraid of the steep, fast slides. Ahead of Aiden, Jace was also on his butt, his legs straight out in front of him. He was using his hands to push off the bottom of the pipe, attempting to scoot faster than gravity alone allowed. Aiden mimicked Jace's movements. Behind him, a metallic thunk made a spot between Aiden's uh, shoulder blades tingle. His imagination provided him with a frighteningly clear image of Haps' honed metal spearing Aiden in the back. Aiden was afraid the downward cant of the pipe would give Haps more speed than Jace and Aiden were managing. It didn't help that Haps was now repeating the same thing he'd said when they'd first spotted him a few minutes before. Lost. Out. With. Me. Haps kept saying. Unnerving crackling surrounded each word. 
Aiden realised he'd been more in his head than in the pipe when his feet suddenly encountered Jay's butt. Forcing himself not to think about the pursuing robot, Aiden focused on his friend and realised that Jace was scrambling onto his knees. The descending tube had ended. I see a ladder pipe, Jay shouted. He's slower on the ladders. Come on. Good thinking, Aiden said as he too repositioned himself onto his knees. Sparing a glance behind him, still convinced that impalement was a likely possibility at any second, Aiden gasped. He was right. The end of Haps's cutting edge hands were a couple feet from Aiden's side. Aiden yelped, yet lunged after Jace and groped for the highest rung on the ladder he could reach. He pulled his legs up as fast as he could and scrabbled up the ladder behind Jace, who was climbing like a monkey with, the tail its, with its tail on fire. The ladder wasn't long, maybe 20 feet at the most. When Aiden reached the top of it, he found Jace frowning at the two pipe openings available to them. Both of them appeared to be level pipes. Lost. Out. With me. Haps' garbled words echoed up from the bottom of the ladder pipe. Aiden pulled his legs off the ladder and looked down. He exhaled in relief. Haps was still at the bottom of the ladder because Haps had always used his foam hands to grip the rungs and those foam hands were missing. The robot could only swipe at the rungs. His swipes were carving at the rungs, cutting them away from the pipe walls. Apparently aware that his hands weren't working right, Haps thrust out his third limb, the telescoping extender that came from his inside, or from his middle. He tried to use it to grab onto one of the rungs he cut up, but the extender wasn't functioning either, at least not as anything that could grip. It too had been damaged, and it looked more like a serrated knife than a cleaning tool. The additional deadly we weapon wasn't good, Aiden thought, but at least Haps didn't have a way to climb up after the boys. Which way do you think? Jace asked. Aiden turned and looked at Jace's tight red face. Jace's face was smeared with tear tracks. Aiden pretended not to notice. I have no idea. It may not matter. If we stay on this level, we might be okay. Look, Aiden pointed at Haps, who was trying and failing to grab a ladder rung. Jace hesitated, clearly not wanting to move in even an inch closer to where Haps was. Then he creeped up next to Aiden and looked down the ladder pipe. Aiden felt Jace's taut muscles loosen, slightly, and he heard Jace exhale. Aiden started to turn to examine the two pipes leaning away from the top of the ladder pipe, but Jace grabbed his arm. Aiden turned back. Aiden, look! Aiden glanced at Jace, who was still staring intently at the bottom of the ladder pipe. Aiden shifted his gaze in that direction, just in time to watch one of the two-way mirrored safety panels sliding into place above Haps. A swish and a click and Haps was no longer in view. Jace and Aiden were now looking at reflections of themselves in the mirrored surface of a safety door. In spite of the situation, Aiden couldn't help but notice neither he nor Jace were looking their best. Aiden sat back on his heels and tried to smooth his hair, which he now knew was even more crazed than usual. He wiped the slick sheen of sweat from his dirty face, careful to avoid his swollen eye. The area around it was now deep, dark and purple. Jace too scrubbed at his face. He'd probably seen the tear tracks on his cheeks. I'm not sure if that partition is a good thing or a bad thing, he said. Aiden nodded. I get you. On the one hand, Haps can't climb up here after us. On the other hand, if those safety doors are closing off wherever he's been, we're going to have less and less room to manoeuvre. I didn't think much about it at the time. I was too busy thinking about getting away. But the pipe behind Haps was pretty torn up. He must be damaging things right and left. Jace frowned and nodded. So what do we do? Aiden had no idea. He looked at the two pipe openings. Which one would keep them away from Haps? Jace nudged Aiden. You have a better memory than I do. Can you remember any of the layout here? I've been trying to picture it in my head, but it's kind of a blur. Give me a second to think. Jace nodded and closed his eyes as if he could make the problem disappear by not seeing it. Aiden leaned back against the pipe wall, but instead of thinking about the maze's layout, he looked through the two-way mirror that separated them from the rest of the pizza plex. They were so close to help. Below them, just be beyond the pipe they were in, two young boys were being strapped into the giant swings. Both boys were redheads, probably brothers. They had identical grins. They were having so much fun. Past them, Aiden could see the bumper car zipping this way and that. Although the scene was blurred because of the layers of cu cuddled plastic separating the tubes from the bumper car arena, 
Aidan was pretty sure Nora and her friends were in four of the cars. They were ramming several cars driven by guys in le le letter jackets. Oh, letter jackets, yeah. I thought maybe it was a misspelling of leather. Um, it was... Wait. Yeah, it was a whole other world. Not just the bumper cars, but the social circle that enveloped kids like Nora and her friends. Aiden had always wondered what it would be like to have a place in a network like that. Aiden? Aiden pulled his gaze from the distant bumper cars. He looked at Jace. Jace too was now gazing at the kids having fun outside the maze. Suddenly Jace got up on his knees, faced the pipe's wall, and started pounding on the sides of the pipe. Help! he screamed. Help us! We're stuck in here! Hey! Help! Jace's panic was infectious. Aiden started pounding on the plastic too. Help! He bellowed at the top of his lungs. We're in here! Help us! Aiden wasn't sure how long they hammered at the plastic with their fists and shouted as loud as they could. Could have been seconds or hours. It was probably at least a few minutes, because when Aiden's last help broke into a rasp, he realised his, so his throat was on fire. His fists throbbed. Aiden put his head in his hands. Jace was still shouting, but his voice was getting hoarse. His strikes on the plastic were, re were weakening. Aiden touched Jace's arm. Jace whipped around. Spittle dripped from the sides of his mouth. His face was red from exertion. They can't hear us, Aiden said. Too much sound muffling in here, and too much noise out there. Jace wiped his mouth. He opened it like he was going to argue, but then he exhaled loudly. I know. Flopping back on his butt, Jace looked away from Aiden. He was trying to pull himself together. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, they sat in silence for a few seconds. Finally, Jace cleared his throat. He turned to face Aiden. Have you figured it out? Aiden sighed. He hadn't figured anything out. He'd been too busy pointlessly yelling his head off. Yes, he remembered the maze's layout pretty well, but that didn't do them a lot of good. He shrugged and pointed at one of the pipes. I think if we take the left pipe here, it'll keep us on this level. He dropped his hand. But the trouble is, what good does that do us? Are we just going to crawl back and forth until our knees are bloody? It's not like there's a way out up here. And he gestured at the kids and adults outside the maze. They can't see us or hear us. I'm wondering if we should just stay here. Maybe someone will come looking for us. Like who? Jace's question was almost whispered, as if he had barely had the strength to ask it. Our parents? His mouth twisted. Good point. Aiden tried to think of something helpful to say. Jace beat him to it. Actually, maybe you're right. Maybe the fast more entertainment people, you know, workers, will find us. Wouldn't they send someone in to repair the pipes? Eventually. Jace was silent. He stared at his sneakers. Eventually, he repeated. His face was pale. Aiden nodded. He had a feeling his face was as pale as Jace's. Aiden pressed his hands against the pale blue plastic beneath them. I don't think we should stay here. Haps may not be able to climb ladders, but all he has to do is find an ascending pipe, and he'll get up to this level eventually. If we stay here, he could box us in. Jace nodded. I remember a couple of junctions where there were, like, at least four offshoots. If we got to one of those, we could rest and think some more. We'd have multiple escape routes if Haps finds us. Good idea. Aiden used his chin to gesture at the left pipe opening. I think that one, of, uh, that one will get us to one of those junctions. Jace nodded. Aiden cringed as he pushed himself up onto his knees. When Jace didn't move, Aiden turned to look at his friend. Jace stared down at the bumper cars. I wish we'd taken out our frustration with the cars instead of coming in here. Yeah, you and me both. Aiden crawled toward the left pipe opening. He assumed Jace would follow him, which he did. The pipe they entered went straight for 50 feet or so, but then it took a big gradual turn and started heading downward. Aiden didn't want to go down, so he quickly looked for an alternative route. When he spotted one, he turned that way. But he was brought up short in just a couple feet. They were blocked by one of the two-way mirror safety barriers. Aiden gestured at the barrier. I don't remember that being here when we passed here by here earlier. He looked around. I remember this pipe. It was a distinctive pipe. Aqua with multicoloured polka dots. Jace nodded. I do too. And no, that wasn't here. Aiden frowned. 
That means Haps was close by. He damaged more tubes, and they were closed off. That's not good. Aiden looked toward another offshoot. We can go this way, but I'm pretty sure it goes to the part of the maze that isn't connected to the main conduits. If we can't get to a main conduit, our options are going to be limited. Yeah, I figured that. Jace looked down the offshoot. Want to try it anyway? We might still be able to find a junction where we can watch for haps. Jace licked his lips. I sure wish I had some water. Me too. Yeah, so do I. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing because I haven't had water. <laughs> I need to stop in a second. Um, in inside. Yeah, we might as well go that way. He pointed at the offshoot and started crawling in that direction. You with me? Jace nodded. Aiden continued on. He could hear Jace shuffle close behind. Um, one reason I'm not as fond of this story is because I feel like a lot of this is filler. Like, I guess you could say it's build up, but honestly, it just feels like I'm reading the same stuff over and over again. Like, oh my god, there's junctions here, there's junctions there, they go up this pipe, they go down the slide, blah blah blah. Like, I want to get to the good part, um, but it's taken a while. So that's one reason I kind of, um, I, I find this one of the weakest of the Tales from the Peterplex story so far. But it does get good eventually, so, so stay with me. <laughs> Nora let out a shriek when Wyatt's bright orange car hurtled into the side of Nora's hot pink one. His car hit hers so hard that the impact literally rattled her teeth. Her head jerked far enough to the left that her earring gouged her neck. Hey! she protested. Wyatt didn't hear her. Not only was the hum of all the bumper cars loud, but the rock music blasting from the arena speakers was even louder. Her voice was lost in the racket. Wyatt grinned at her. She gave him her best fuming, dirty look, which didn't bother him at all. He winked and turned his car to go after someone else. Nora clenched her steering wheel and stomped on her accelerator, heading after Wyatt. She needed some payback. Whizzing past a couple of her friends, Nora kept Wyatt in her sights as she aimed toward the arena's short outside wall. She intended to skirt past the melee the melee in the middle and sneak up on Wyatt. As she scooted along the wall, Nora glanced over the top of the wall. Beyond it, she could see a labyrinth of dark plastic pipes that extended into darkness in the distance. Something about the tangled plastic gave Nora the heebie-jeebies. She wondered what was back there. A scream pulled her attention to the arena. Out in front of her, Wyatt and his friends were ganging up on some small kids who were having trouble controlling their cars. Nora forgot all about the pipes as she stomped on her accelerator. She focused on Wyatt and aimed right at him. Well, that's a bit of a weird inclusion in the story. What What's that going to do with everything? <laughs> I actually don't know. I, I don't know what it has to do with anything. Anyway, Aiden lost track of the number of pipes he and Jace wound through before they finally found a big junction that gave them a reasonable line of sight down every approaching tube. The multiple openings would provide several escape routes and would allow the boys to hear better. The more open the maze was, the less the pipes muted sound. Uh, Aiden shifted into a sitting position. Jace did the same. Aiden pointed at the various openings in turn. That one is a ladder down. I don't think it's going to be a good option. Haps could just fling himself down after us. He pointed us. He pointed to the next two openings. Those are level, so we could go that way, but Haps could probably come after us pretty easily. He pointed at the last opening. I think going up that climbing pipe will be best. We already know Haps can't do ladders, and I don't see how he could do climbing pipes without his foam hands. Jace looked at the climbing pipe opening. But what's up there? How do we know it won't be another blocked off arena? Or ar area? Aiden crawled to the opening and looked up the ladder. He exhaled loudly. It looks clear. He returned to his sitting position. He rubbed his knees. The boys didn't speak for several minutes. Finally, Jace broke the silence. I feel bad about kicking Haps. I feel bad about a lot of things. Jay stared at his feet. Then he looked up at Aiden. Do you think robots are vindica vindic vindictive? Vindictive, yeah. Vindictive. Ah, vindictive. There we go. Do you think robots are vindictive? Aiden made a face. What? You think Haps is trying to get back at us for kicking him? You think he turned his arms into weapons so he can exact bloody revenge? Aiden gave Jason, are you kidding me look? Haps is high tech, 
But he's a robot. Robots don't feel, therefore they can't be vindictive. Jace's mouth drooped. Yeah, of course you're right. I'm being dumb. Aiden punched, Jace, uh, punched Jace's arm. You're never dumb. You're the smartest person I know. And you know, like, what, five people? Aiden laughed. Good point. He sobered and poked Jace. But I mean it. You're smart. Not smart enough to get us out of here. Aiden shook his head. We'll figure something out. Although he tried to put the confidence into words when he spoke them, as soon as they were out of his mouth, Aiden could hear the lie. He realised that he didn't believe what a screeching scrape cut into Aiden's thoughts. The scrape was followed by a series of clunks, and then the distorted robotic voice. Out. With. Me. Jay stiffened. His eyes were huge. Aiden figured his eyes were just as big. His heart had started racing. Out. With. Me. Haps repeated. Sometime since they'd last seen him, Haps had lost more of his verbal functioning. Where lost had been only a gravelly growl preceded the word out. <clears throat> but out sounded even more alarming than it had before. The command wasn't so much spoken in Haps's now contorted voice as it was barked like it was being shouted by an irate direct, uh, dictator. One with the means to execute his subjects. Aiden managed to get his legs working. Kneeling, he scrambled to the, pipe, the climbing pipe opening. When Jace didn't move, when he continued to stare in the direction of Haps's approach, Aiden nudged him with the toe of his boot. Come on! Jace blinked and got on his knees. He crawled into the climbing pipe behind Aiden. Aiden reached for the first handhold. As fast as he could, he pulled himself up and found a foothold. Then he reached for the next handhold, and the next, and the next. He crawled up the wall like a spider fleeing a ravenous bird. He didn't want to. T uh, he didn't turn to look, but it sounded like Jace was right behind him. As they'd hoped, the climbing tube ended up at an open fork leading to two level pipes. As Aiden stopped to evaluate his choices, his shoulders tightened. Haps' insistent warped reflection seemed to bounce back and forth up the climbing pipe behind them. Aiden risked a look at Haps, um, as Haps repeated his insistent. Out with me. The words echoed through the climbing pipe and seemed to radiate outwards into other, other tubes. As soon as Aiden checked on Haps, he was sorry he had. Although Haps hadn't been able to manage the ladder pipe, he was having better luck with the climbing pipe. His knife-like hands were slashing at the pipe's walls, but his mutilated treads still had enough functionality to find purchase on the hand and footholds. Haps' progress was thankfully slow, but it was still progress. He was climbing the he was scaling the climbing tube. Come on! Aiden led Jace into the left pipe. They scurried along the pipe as fast as they could, but when they rounded its first bend, they realised they'd chosen the wrong pipe. It was blocked with a two-way mirror security barrier. Turn around! Aiden shouted to Jace as soon as he saw the barrier. Turn around! Jace turned around, but he was panting in terror. Aiden understood why. Had Haps made it to the top of the climbing pipe? If he had, they'd be crawling right into the sharp metal shards that used to be Haps' hands. But what choice did they have? Faster! Aiden urged Jace. He was nearly shoving Jace down the pipe. Aiden's long legs gave him more speed than Jace's short ones, and Jace was slowly slowing, clearly reluctant to face what might be waiting at the end of the pipe. Aiden shoved Jace out of the way and squeezed past him. He figured he had a better chance of facing off against Haps than Jace did. Seconds after Aiden took the lead, they reached the junction again. At the same exact moment, the spear-like tip of Haps' left arm scored a gash in the junction's floor. The ripping sound made Haps' whirring and clanking even more hideous. Aiden felt like they were in the bowels of churning machinery designed to disassemble and pulverise whatever was put into it. As Haps' now serrated extender arm flailed toward Aiden, he flattered himself on the bottom of the pipe. His gaze darted around. Behind Haps, a security mirror was sliding over the top of the, secu uh, of the climbing pipe. That way was no longer an option. They couldn't go back the way they'd just come because it went nowhere, and Haps was blocking the only other pipe entrance. Aiden looked up at Haps' gleaming metal arms. He froze when the arms started reaching for him. Suddenly, Jace let out a banshee yell. Lunging over the top of Aiden, Jace dove under Haps' outstretched arms. His Swiss army knife in his fist, Jace jammed the blade into the open doorway in Haps' torso. Jace's attack on Haps galvanised Aiden. 
He knew Jace's little knife wasn't going to do much damage to Haps' circuits, but he remembered that the little robot didn't weigh that much. Maybe they could drive him back, if they could avoid getting slashed. Jace pulled his knife back and barely avoided getting stabbed when Haps jerked toward him. Aiden quickly flipped to his side and spun. He scissor kicked Haps, shoving the robot against the junction's wall. Realising what Aiden was trying to do, Jace lay flat and added his kicks to the attack. Between the two of them, they managed to shove Haps into the dead end pipe, and they were able to knock him over. When Haps landed on his side, Aiden got to his knees. Maybe we can finish him off, Aiden thought. They should attack instead of fleeing. If they could get the plastic shell off his head, they might be able to rip out his circuitry. He fleetingly asked himself why he mastered juggling, hula hooping, jump roping and yo-yoing. What good did those talents do him now? It wasn't like he could pull a juggling pin out of his back pocket and whack Haps in the face with it. Jace must have had the same attack idea that Aiden had. He, too, shifted to his knees. His mouth was set and his jaw bunched. He was ready for battle. Together, the two boys advanced on the thrashing robot. They didn't get far. Haps might have been on his side, but his arms hadn't stopped moving. He waved them continuously, which effectively turned him into a robotic propeller. Shining, sharp metal slides through the air in turbulent sweeps that were impossible to completely avoid. One of Haps' swipes caught Aiden on the cheek. Hot pain seared his cheek, his skin, and warm blood ran down his jaw. He jerked his head back. Go, Aiden! Jay shouted. He pointed at the other pipe opening. We need to get away while we can! As Jay spoke, Haps suddenly whirled, whirred loudly and flipped up onto his treads. Go! Jace urged again. Aiden didn't argue. He turned around and crawled pell-mell into the other available pipe opening. Checking over his shoulder, Aiden saw that Jace was right behind him, and Haps was right behind Jace. The robot had wasted no time re reorienting himself. Out with me, he chanted as he rolled erratically after them. The pipe was unfortunately a level pipe. Although Aiden and Jace were racing through it as fast as they could, Haps was having no trouble keeping up. The sounds of his humming motor and crunching treads chased the boys down the pipe. Aiden's mouth went dry at the thought of how close Taps' jagged metal limbs must have been getting to Jace's feet. The image of that metal piercing Jace's sneakers or his skin gave Aiden the strength to crawl even faster. The pipe took a sharp left turn and then it switched back immediately to the right. After the abrupt right, it jogged left again. At the end of the left jog, the pipe opened to a platform. It was the top of a slide! Aiden lunged onto the platform. At the same time, he reached back and grabbed Jace by the shirt. He yanked Jace into his arms, just as Haps lurched toward him, his deadly blade-like appendages sweeping the air only a few inches away from them. Hold on to me, Aiden shouted. He pushed off the platform with every bit of strength he had. The slide they found was a good one. It had a couple turns, but mostly it was steep and straight. In just a matter of seconds, it shot them into a ball pit similar to the one they landed in just a couple hours earlier. Aiden could only hope the few seconds it had taken to get to the pit had been enough. He had a sinking feeling it hadn't been, but he didn't have time to think about his dread. As soon as they hit the plastic orbs, both Aiden and Jace started beating the balls aside, lunging their way through the colourful spherical sea. Aiden had his eye on a pipe opening at the other side of the pit. Unfortunately though, they didn't reach it before Haps reached them. As Aiden's foreboding had predicted, Haps had come down the slide just as fast, probably even faster than Aiden and Jace had. And when he'd come off the slide, maybe because he was more compact, Haps had been launched further out into the pit than the boys had been. Haps also had no trouble ploughing his way through the plastic balls. His mass shoved the balls aside like they were nothing. This is why Haps got to them before Aiden and Jace could get out of the ball pit. And because Aiden was in the lead, Haps got to Jace first. Out with me! Haps crackled as he reached out to grab his quarry. Jace must have sensed that Haps was right behind him because he immediately dove into the ball pit as if it was a lake and he could skim under its surface to get away. It would have been a decent plan probably if his feet hadn't popped up when he dove down. Haps' limbs were extended in the efforts to grab Jace when Jace's feet rose up out of the ball pit. Haps immediately tried to clutch the feet, but of course, his hands couldn't clutch. They could only slice. The razor-like spikes at the ends of Haps' arms cut right through one of the Jace's ankles. 
hacking off Jace's right foot roughly and crudely, and with so much force that the robot was torn uh, that the robot the foot was torn free of Jace's ankle and spit aside as if by a chainsaw. The second the foot landed among the plastic balls with a plop, Jace's upper body erupted from the ball pit. Jace's mouth was opened wide in a shriek that was so loud and high pitched, Aiden wouldn't have been surprised if it had been cracked nearby if it had cracked nearby mirrored partitions. Aiden immediately reached for Jace, grabbing at his friend's arm. He wasn't thinking. He had no plan. He was just reacting. The problem was that Haps was doing the same thing, and it was faster than Aiden. When Jace's chest appeared from under the heaving ball pit, Haps grabbed for Jace again. The robot's now bloody knife hands slashed through Jace's shoulder, and Jace's shrieks ratcheted even higher. Aiden managed to hang on to Jace's forearm, pulling with all his might, Aiden hitched Jace from the pit. As soon as Jace was out of the pit, Aiden hooked his arms under Jace's armpits. Then he levered himself into the nearby pipe. He didn't know if it was too late to save his friend, but he had to try. In just a few seconds since Jace's foot was amputated, he must have lost a, lot, uh, lost a massive amount of blood. Aiden had to get Jace away from Haps, or it was going to be too late. Out with me! Haps persisted. It gets more and more cursed. Um, Aiden yanked Jace further into the pipe. Jace continued to scream in pain. His eyes were bulging impossibly wide, and his mouth was stretched was stretched into a grimace. Hang on, Jace! Aiden shouted. He threw himself backward along the pipe, hauling Jace with him. But again, he wasn't fast enough. Haps moved too quickly, and as he moved, he kept trying to get a hold of Jace. The shrill sound of metal on metal filled Aiden's ears as Haps brought both limbs together around Jace's lower body. Aiden was sure Haps was trying to pick up Jace, but of course his torn metal couldn't do that. All it could do was slice and shred. Aiden couldn't see what Haps was doing to Jace, but he could hear his bawling, eye, his bawling cries, and he could see Jace's face. It was so misshapen by pain that it was almost unrecognisable. Aiden tried to hold his friend's gaze, willing him to stay alive. Behind Jace, the robot reached out again. With me, Haps repeated. Aiden pushed off the floor of the pipe with all his strength. Clutching his friend, he heaved himself backward, trying to snatch Jace out of Haps's range, but he couldn't do it. Haps thrashed forward, and Jace howled. As he did, blood poured from his mouth. Oh god, that's so creepy. Jace's eyes blinked once. Aiden felt Jace's body stiffen in the arms. Then he felt Jace go limp. Jace's eyes started. Uh, Jace's eyes start. Uh, let me start again. Jace's eyes stared at nothing. Aiden, frozen in disbelief and shock, held on to Jace's body. He locked his gaze on Haps. Out with me, Haps said. Aiden had no choice. He let go of Jace and crawled like a demon down the pipe. The next several seconds were nothing more than a confusion of sound and sensation for Aiden. He couldn't make sense of anything he was experiencing. He was vaguely aware that he was calling for his life, but that thought was just a dim perception that was outweighed by all the other information assaulting his overloaded brain. As if cascading down on him all at once, he felt tears spilling down his cheeks, bile filling his throat, snot dripping from his nose, sweat trickling down his back, blood pounding down his veins and pain flashing in his knees. That is such a good line right there. That is so well written. Woven through all of that, overwhelming grief made him want to howl like an enraged wolf. Underneath these primitive reactions, his mind could only offer one repeated thought. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Aiden's peripheral senses were working enough for him to be aware when Haps got close. He heard the metallic shredding sounds, and he registered the relentless whirring and the endless chant of OUT WITH ME! Putting on as much speed as he could, Aiden shot through the pipe and found himself in another junction. Three of the pipe openings were in the junction were partitioned off. He had just one option. Thankfully, it was a ladder pipe. Just as Haps emerged from the pipe behind Aiden, Aiden scrambled up the ladder rungs. Haps was so close that Aiden felt Haps' sharp metal edges grazed the leather on the sole of Aiden's left boot. He quickly whipped his leg up, whimpering as he did. He couldn't contain the whimper. The image of Jace's disconnected foot filled Aiden with total mind-numbing hysteria. 
Aiden was devastated by the death of his friend, of course, but the idea of getting dismembered, for some reason, was 100 times more horrifying than simply dying. He didn't want to go out the way Jace had. No way. The ladder pipe was a short one. Aiden didn't think it took him up a full level, maybe a half level. The ladder pipe came to an end at a fork between two pipes. Aiden, however, one of the... Uh, sorry. Again, however, one of the paths was blocked. Once more, Aiden had just one choice. Glancing down to be sure Hats was stopped at the bottom of the ladder, Aiden started to duck into the open pipe. He hesitated when he saw that Haps was looking up at him. Haps had his round white head tipped back, and his one functioning eye was gazing at Aiden intensely. The intent, Aiden thought, looked decidedly evil. Uh, decidedly evil. But of course, that was crazy. As he told Jace, Haps wasn't capable of evil. He was just a robot with a job to do, and he was doing his job the best he could. He didn't care that the results of his efforts were carving up innocent kids. Did he? Aiden shook his head, but he couldn't tear his gaze from Haps. As Aiden watched, Haps tipped his head back into its usual position and powered backward away from the ladder. Haps turned and slipped back into the ball pit, his butchered treads belching plastic balls up around him. Haps mowed right over the top of Chase's limp, lacerated body and disappeared from Aiden's view. He's going to find a way to get to me, Aiden said. As soon as he spoke, Aiden realised no one was there to hear him. Jace was gone. Didn't Aiden get that? He just watched the murdering robot run over the top of his dead friend. Aiden was alone. He was talking to himself. Aiden had no idea where he was going as he crawled through the pipe. He and Jace had looked for a way out and hadn't found one. What could Aiden do? He didn't know, but he knew he wasn't going to sit still and wait for Haps to come and shred him. He put his head down and crawled. Aiden wasn't sure how long he had crawled before he reached a fork. That was no longer a fork. One of the pipe openings in front of Aiden was blocked. The other was a gradual slide that curved out of sight. Aiden looked back over at his shoulder. Should he retrace his steps and make his way back into the pit? Uh, if Haps was looking for him, Haps was no longer in the pit. And maybe the robot wouldn't have the reasoning capacity to return to the place Aiden had fled. There was only one problem with that idea. Aiden didn't want to return to the bull pit. Jace was in the ball pit, and Jace's blood was in the ball pit. No, Aiden couldn't face going back into the ball pit. That left him with just one choice. He eased himself feet first into the gradual slide. Because he didn't know where Haps was, for all Aiden knew, the robot might have been waiting at the bottom of the slide. Aiden was in no hurry to get to the bottom of the pipe. So, he let himself slip slowly downward, trying to ignore the way his imagination conjured up an image of Haps waiting at the bottom. The pipe Aiden was in, like so many others in the section of the maze, was walled by the two-way mirror. Aiden could see through it easily, but he knew no one could see him. The slide passed by the back of the laser tag arena, and Aiden watched a couple boys creep around a fake boulder and ambush a couple girls. With their goggles on, the teens weren't easily recognisable, but Aiden was pretty sure they were in his science class. They weren't friends, but he knew them. If only he'd managed to make more friends, Maybe if he and Jace hadn't been their own universe, guys like Landon wouldn't have picked on them. And if guys like Landon had left them alone, Aiden wouldn't have got a black, uh, gotten a black eye. If he hadn't gotten a black eye, maybe he wouldn't have wanted to escape into the maze. Maybe his whole life would have been different. Maybe Jace would, would have still had a life. Aiden reached the bottom of the gradual slide and he immediately cursed his vivid imagination. It had turned Aiden's fears into reality. Haps was coming along the pipe toward the bull pit at the bottom of the slide. He was just 20 feet from the pit. Swallowing a scream of terror, Aiden scrambled through the bulls and crawled into the closest pipe. He clambered as fast as he could through the pipe, trying to put as much distance as he could between himself and the pursuing robot. Haps' churring sounds echoed behind Aiden. Its chant reverberated through Aiden's chest. Out with me, Haps insisted. Aiden took a left turn and found himself in a climbing pipe. Nearly leaping up its sides, he grabbed for a handhold, and he pulled himself upward. Below him, Haps clattered closer. Risking a downward glance, Aiden nearly lost his grip on the pipe when he saw Haps's one working eye look up at him. Haps began to ascend the pipe like a demented spider. Aiden climbed faster. At the top of the climbing wall, uh, Aiden faced the junction of three pipes. He didn't stop to think about which way to go. He just crawled down the closest pipe. 
the one to the right. The scraping sounds behind Aiden told him that Haps wasn't far behind. Aiden's knees were screeding, screaming at him as he pounded through the pipe. It was getting harder and harder to move quickly. It felt like the skin over his kneecaps was raw. He was having trouble breathing too, concentrating on fleeing Haps. Aiden hadn't noticed until now that the tears that had been cascading down his cheeks since Jace had died. Now his nose was plugged from all the crying. He was gasping for air through his mouth. He could hear himself mewling and panting. And worse, he could hear Haps. The robot continued to chant, Out with me! The chant was way too close. But the chant wasn't the worst of the sounds trailing after Aiden. The truly appalling sounds were the nails on a blackboard rasps of Haps' jagged metal edges gouging the sides of the pipe behind Aiden. He could all too clearly imagine what he'd feel if Haps, is, if Haps reached him. Almost near the end of the pipe he was in, Aiden spotted a sloping pipe. Oh my god, get to the end of the story already. Uh, although he was tempted to use it, he was pretty sure Haps could easily catch up to him on a slide. Uh, I think this is a good story, don't worry. But, um, like, it is a little bit slow. Uh, so he kept going, and he discovered this pipe ended up looping back around to the one he'd just been in, almost. Just before Aiden reached the juncture of the two pipes, he realised that the pipe he'd been in, he'd just been in, was now closed off. Obviously, Haps had damaged it enough to activate another safety barrier. Aiden glanced over his shoulder and yelped. Haps was only about 15 feet away. Out with me, Haps said. The blood-stained metal of his killing arms reached for Aiden. Aiden had no choice now. He was nearly cornered. He quickly backtracked a couple feet and dove headfirst down the sliding pipe. The second Aiden landed in the ball pit at the base of the slide, he didn't make the same mistake Jace had made. Aiden didn't try to swim through the pit. Instead, he immediately found his footing and turned to face the slide he'd just come down. He made the turn barely in time. Haps came catapulting off the end of the slide the second Aiden faced it. Because Aiden could see ha Haps' trajectory though, he was able to fling himself out of the robot's path. When Haps hit the ball pit, he landed on his head. Aiden knew the robot would right himself quickly, but it would take a few seconds. Aiden used every one of those seconds to his advantage. Coiling into a tight spring, Aiden launched himself across the ball pit, reaching for the end of the nearest open pipe. He was in the pipe and crawling for all he was worth, before he heard Haps' whirring treads thump into the pipe behind him. Aiden was no longer aware of his body, he realised. He couldn't feel his knees anymore. He couldn't hear his breathing. It was as if his consciousness had transcended his physicality. He was no longer a boy crawling through a maze. He had a single-minded goal, get away from Haps. Aiden crawled around a bend and let himself, for an instant, feel the relief of having Haps out of his sight. But when he looked at the way ahead, he was dismayed to see that more safety barriers had gone up. He was at the junction, but he, had, he only had one choice. Two of the pipes were closed off. Aiden crawled into the one available pipe. As soon as Aiden entered the pipe, he recognised it. He and Jace had been in this pipe twice and Aiden knew it was a loop with only a couple offshoots. He had to get to one of the offshoots before Haps got too close. Taking a quick glance over his shoulder, Aiden realised that his goal was easier set than accomplished. Haps was the closest he'd ever been. He was less than 10 feet away. Aiden put on the afterburners. He crawled faster than he'd ever crawled in his life. He crawled so fast that by the time he approached the first offshoot, he'd managed to get about 20 feet ahead of the relentless robot. He charged toward the offshoot with the first hope that he'd felt since Jace had died. If Aiden remembered right, this offshoot led to a ladder. Haps couldn't manage ladders. If Aiden could reach the ladder, he could... Aiden came to an abrupt stop. He reached the first offshoot, and it was closed off. A safety partition barred the way. No, Aiden whispered. Out with me, Haps said. He was once again way too close. Aiden started crawling once more. The other offshoot was just around the curve up ahead. It didn't lead to a ladder, but it did lead to a long tunnel that had a lot of intersecting pipes. Reaching that offshoot would at least give Aiden some options. If Haps had been a living, breathing creature, Aiden was sure he'd have been able to feel Haps' breath behind him. As it was, Aiden kept expecting to feel Haps' jagged metal appendages slide into his foot at any moment. For some reason, Aiden was back in his body again. The muscles in his legs were knotted, and his feet felt weird as if they were curling up in dread of Haps' savage limbs. Aiden tried to ignore everything he felt. He knew that if he thought about what would happen if Haps reached him, he wouldn't have the strength to keep crawling, and he had to reach the other offshoot. 
just as his body sensations had returned, Aiden's auditory systems came back online too. He could once again hear his breath. He could also hear the rhythmic thudding of his knees against the plastic, uh, the pipe's plastic. And of course, he could hear Haps' clicks and whirs and grinds and the resolute chant getting closer and closer. Just a few more seconds, Aiden thought. The offshoot was right round the corner. But it wasn't. When Aiden sped toward where he expected the offshoot to be, his heart plummeted into his gut. The offshoot wasn't open anymore. Like the other one, it was now covered by a safety barrier. <laughs> Aiden was strapped, and Haps was getting closer. Out with me! Haps ordered him. The robot's crackly voice was way too loud, which meant it was way too close. Aiden didn't look back to see just how close Haps was. He didn't want to know. Given no other choice, Aiden tore past the blocked offshoot. It was instinct to keep going, but Aiden knew his flight from Haps was futile now. With the offshoots blocked, Aiden was now caught in a closed off loop. All he could do was go around and around in a circle. Haps' calamitous pursuit had been activating security barriers all along. Aiden had been essentially herded like an animal into a killing zone. He had nowhere to go, but still, he kept crawling. As Aiden crawled, he didn't allow himself to think anymore. If he thought, he'd have to ask himself the questions he didn't want to ask. How long could he stay ahead of Haps? How long would it be before Haps' out-of-control passage through the looped pipe would damage it enough to partition it off even more? How long would it be before Aiden died the same way Jace had? As Aiden crawled through the pipe, he couldn't help but see the kids beyond the pipe's plastic walls. And he realised he had gotten his wish. He was invisible. Ooh! Ooh! That's a good ending, actually. Well, it's not a good ending. Of course he dies. Well, it's kind of good that he died because he was an awful character anyway. Okay. My eyes need a second to adjust because I've been staring at the screen for a while and reading this pipe goes into this pipe, this go pipe goes into this pipe. Uh, honestly, that is my my one big criticism with this story. It all happens in a pipe maze. So the way that they describe the scenery is this pipe goes into this pipe, this pipe is coloured this colour, this pipe leads to a slide, which leads to a ball pit. Like, it's all the same stuff over and over again, which gets a bit boring after a while, I must be honest. Like, yeah, the, hap the, the story was pretty good, okay? It was good. It wasn't as good as, or as mo mind-blowing as some of the other stories, but it was still good, don't get me wrong. Uh, and that ending actually gave me chills. Uh, I didn't think it would. I knew the last sentence, or I, I knew, like what the ending was, the fact that he was invisible. But when I just read that just now, it actually did give me the, the chills, so that's good. Um, because it's like, we, I wasn't expecting that ending to come up, like, just now. Because, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what other points to make, because there wasn't too much. Haps was, like, Haps was definitely a presence always behind him. And, man, that, Jace's death was very, like, gruesome. It wasn't gruesomely explained, but it was pretty gruesome. He just tore off his shoulders from his, uh, his limbs from his sh shoulders. Stuff like that. Uh, could have seen, like, more screaming and stuff, like, from Jace, I guess. I don't know. I feel like he never had, hit, like, his last words or anything. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. That was great. So... The final story, here's a little preview for those of you who don't, don't want to wait for the... Anyway, uh, the next story is B7. This story is mind-blowing, I'm telling you. It is... It should be called MB because it is mind-blowing, honestly. Uh, yeah, good one, Ozone. Uh, you need to read B7. If you didn't like Haps, that's completely fine. That doesn't mean the quality of the stories has gone down because B7 is freaking fantastic. I have so much passion for B7 and I'm so excited to read it. So that is what's going to be happening next time. Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook read through. I've been Ozone, but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.